Hello everyone and welcome to Cinderful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Black Library review. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of the many publications brought out by Black Library and giving you our thoughts on the book audio drama whatever it happens to be now i will say that we will try to keep this review to as spoiler free as possible though there will obviously be points where we talk about things happening in the book we will try to keep away from saying any of the major plot points so you can go and read this book for yourself we'll just give you our thoughts on whether or not we think it is something you may be interested in so we'll use this video to instruct you on maybe is this sort of going to be a book that you would like to see with that all said and out the way let's get cracking on let's talk a little bit about the book that we have reviewed this time Today we are going to take a look at Hallow Ground by Richard Strachan, performed and narrated by Helen Keeney on the Audible version. As always, I generally prefer listening to audios, I just don't have the time to pick up a book. I like listening to audios while I paint miniatures, while I do some of my other YouTube work, while I look after the kids, while I do some chores around the house like wash the dishes and stuff like that. I love listening to audios. This book was narrated, as I said, by Helen Keeney, and she does a fantastic job at evoking the sort of narrative, the feeling, and the drama of the story. A really well-performed narrative audio book. Um, really, really enjoyed it. So fantastic job to Helen. You really brought all the characters and the entire book to life really, really well. With that all said, let's get cracking on, and let's get started in our review of Hallowed Ground by Richard Strachan. And so, setting the scene for our story. Hallowed Ground is set in the aftermath of the Great Battle for Excelsis, where Kragnos, the voice and hand of Slanesh as well, along with the Skaven, all tried in their various different ways to overthrow the city in our final culminating battle of the Broken Realm Saga. Of course, Excelsis did survive these threats. It did win out in the end. And now we join Doralia Van Denst, a lot, who has found herself alone. Um, her father, Galen, having left in the dark of night with nothing but a note to say, do not follow him. Naturally, Doralia completely ignores her father's words and sets off into the garish wilderness to find her father, but what she will learn to find and learn and find will be truly shocking and could lead once again to the doom of Excelsis. I mean, when hasn't that city been in trouble? I remember reading stories, obviously. The introduction of Excelsis got introduced in uh, Cursed City. Uh, we've then obviously had Kragnos. We've had so many other stories about Excelsis being in terrible danger. City of Prophecy? City of Prophesized Doom, perhaps? It's always in trouble. But... Let's get cracking on with the rest of the review. And so, the book's purpose. This is the first full-length novel about the Vendensed Witch Hunter family. It is worth noting that they do sort of talk about this and the way that Black Library sort of introduced this is it is a Vendensed story or a Vendensed audiobook in whichever way they've advertised it. So, to me, this really makes it feel like this is just the first book we are going to read about the Vendensed, having them as major characters in the narrative side of Warhammer. Now, this book introduces both the two characters properly to us. Obviously, we got to read a little bit about them in uh, the Broken Realm Saga when they were first introduced, but this really just fleshes out the two characters, fleshing out their backstory, their sort of motives, their quirks of each character. We really get both characters opened up really well, and that sort of relationship and learning why father and daughter are witch hunters across the mortal realms together, and why they are who and what they are. It's a really good book at just exploring two brand new characters, introducing them, and letting us learn about them. I can't wait to read more about the Vendance family. This was really enjoyable of just introducing some new characters, some new fresh blood to the narrative sort of scene of Warhammer Age of Sigma. And so our main characters are Duralia and Galen Vendance, father and daughter. Galen is a pretty old, wizened, and battle-hardened 
Uh, witch hunting, he's been doing this all his life. His family just seems to have this lineage of witch hunter, um, of un taking out the undead, the despicable demon, and many other besides. He's seen a lot of things in his time and has known a lot of sorrow in his time as well. His daughter, Duralia, is the daughter of two witch hunters, both Galen and his former wife as well. We're both witch hunters, and Duralia carries her mother's crossbow. Her mother, unfortunately, no longer with us. Um, however, Duralia is an exceptional student of witch hunters, and we really get to see this throughout the entirety of the book, that Galen really believes that she is the absolute best at what she does. He looks at her and goes, wow, she is so much better than he was. And it's perhaps this that leads to Duralia sort of always doubting herself because is she good enough in her father's eyes? It's a really, really interesting dynamic of two characters that absolutely love each other but want nothing more than to push the other one to always be better. And so what does this book do well? And first of all, I want to say... I think this, out of all the books I've read now of Richard Strachan's, obviously he's got the three currently for Black Library out. Uh, that would be the uh, Warcry Catacombs, Blood of the End of a Chosen, uh, End of Enlightenment, which is a fantastic Illumineth Realm Lords vs. Ossiak Bone Reaper story, and now Hallowed Ground. Um, one of his best things when writing, I think, is really drawing you into the secondary complement of characters. He does good writing and makes you really like and enjoy the main characters. Of course, that's a fundamental part of any book is wanting to feel emotion for the main characters, but he does a really good job of secondary characters, characters in the background, even those with very limited screen time, he makes you feel a connection towards them and the events that happen to those characters you really do feel for. I think this is something that he does really amazing in all his writing and in any book I've felt there's been characters that I really enjoyed that were not the main characters. Um, and speaking of that sort of stuff, he has a good job of doing this with the villains as well. Um, the villains of the story are generally rather relatable and Almost to a point, likeable, though, you know, they're villains, so at the very least, you feel the pain and believe the motives of the villains in this. You can understand where his villains are coming from. Making villains relatable and understandable is really interesting because it obviously tugs at those sort of heartstrings as you're reading something to go, do I really want this villain to be ended? Um, do I really want the things that are coming to this villain to actually come? Do I want our main characters to succeed against the villains or the adversaries in the story? This is really good because it really does make you ask those questions. Now, on top of this, they're just things that I believe that Richard does really well with his writing, but the book does a really whole sort of family business angle really well. They are two characters that absolutely love each other and have such a deep sort of relationship, but also they are, you know, business partners as well, and you can see that sort of wanting to be better wanting to make the other one better than what they are, wanting the father to want the daughter to be a better person and a better um, soldier in Sigmar's name than he ever was. It's a really interesting dynamic between the two characters, and I think he hit it spot on, that father-daughter sort of relationship in such a terrible business is so well portrayed. What changes about our main characters? Now, this is where there will be a little bit of spoilers, um, if you don't want even the slightest spoiler when reading, I strongly suggest just skipping ahead until you see uh, not what changes about our main characters as the title. No, skip ahead another minute or so and you'll probably find the next slide talking about something else. But you've been warned, so three, two, one, we're talking spoilers now. And so two main things change about our characters through the story. First of all is the daughter surpassing the father. This is a really interesting story uh, that goes on of Duralia finally sort of, I guess, stepping out of her father's shadow. He sees what she is, but I think throughout the entirety of the story, Duralia begins to see it herself. And we get some fantastic ending moments of the story uh, that really do show the changes in Duralia as a character. But perhaps the most exciting thing is we get closure for our two characters on particular things that happen within the story and particular things in their backstory we get to learn about in the first sort of parts of the book. We really do get that closure of some things and some 
parts of their story sort of setting up for whatever is next to come for the Van Denst Witch Hunter family. Who would like this book? Well, first of all, Cities of Sigma fans, obviously, uh, this is all about some characters that you can take in your army. Now, I would say if you enjoyed the Callus and Toll stories and the sort of witch hunter and apprentice dynamic, then this duo is something you would probably enjoy as well. So if you've read City of Secrets or Callus and Toll, The Silver Shard, or any of their other stories from Callus and Toll, this is definitely sort of right up that sort of alley. I'd also say if you like like Cursed City and all of that, um, with a much more sort of down to earth story of, you know, ordinary people. So sort of a David versus Goliath style story where they're fighting against powers that are much more powerful than they could ever possibly imagine. It's something that's far greater than them. So if you like that sort of fighting against a big bad evil with regular sort of dudes, this is the story for you. And so, in summary, this was a great introduction, really well narrated. I can't say that enough on how great a job Helen did at narrating this and bringing the entire story to life to a couple of brand new characters in the Mortal Realms. The Venton Dents, I feel, have just so much more to give as characters, um, and I hope this is just the beginning for them from Black Library, and indeed in Age of Sigma story in general. Having these down-to-earth human characters in Age of Sigma makes the entire universe so much more relatable, and I'm glad we finally have models of characters like this as well. It's fantastic seeing some of the other stories we've seen, but finally having two characters that I can play on the tabletop as well as read about in Black Library fiction is amazing. The story was fun, engaging and suspenseful with really well written characters all around, be that the main two characters, our side characters, characters that are in there for a short time and our villains, all of them really well written and engaging and interesting characters. I honestly think this may be Richard Strachan's best work for Black Library, yet he's put out some really strong books. Um, Ranking those three would be incredibly tough, but I think this, for me, maybe pips it to number one spot. A fantastic story. As always, with all of our Black Library reviews, if you've read this or are reading this, want to read this, let us know what you think down in the comments below. And also, if there's a new story or something you think we should review for Black Library, please do let us know down in the comments below as well, or go on to our YouTube members or Patreon and recommend it, and we'll get onto YouTube members and Patreon recommendations first of all. With that said, thank you very much. Um, this was a really good story. I really enjoyed it. For me, a solid 9 out of 10, I think, uh, for a Black Library story. Well, that's the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And leave a comment down below and let us know what you enjoyed about the video. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our fine community here at Sinful Gaming, you can do so by following the link in the video's description to our Discord server. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so either via Patreon or YouTube members, and both of those are linked again down in the video's description. As a special thanks to all our Patreon and YouTube members, I'd like to give a shout out to them all. So a special thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, James Soren, Greenskins Gaming, AJC, Kenny Lowe, Outer and Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Agu, Anthony B, Anton Nielsen, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Dynet226 and Derek. And a special shout out to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Chris Wallace, Ronya, Vinny, Lock Lark, The Johnny 84, David Ellsworth, Revenar, Wolfric Nick, Broken Shelf, Ariana Airwoods, and Sean Scott. Lastly, a special thanks, first of all, to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for our channel, and to X Morphic, who does all the amazing Discord server background work for us. Thank you all for watching. Once again, stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the Grey. Ciao for now.